So now, which brings me to introducing our next two speakers. We are very excited to have Mi Yong Shin and Lorenzo Tilva. They are both working as software engineers at Egalia. Shin is a developer specialized in web, web platform development with experience with WebKit and Chromium on various embedded devices. And Lorenzo is a software engineer with years of experience on the Egalia web browser team participating on different projects on Chromium and WebKit. So we're really grateful that you guys have joined us and I'm going to hand over to you and then pop back in in about 25 minutes with the questions. So over to you. Hi, so in the first place, thanks for having us uh, here. It has been a really a pleasure to hear everyone else uh, before us all the uh, talks were very interesting and and here we will be trying to explain a bit uh, which is the status of some chromium fixtures and how work is being done in order to strengthen the uh, ecosystem to with some functionalities used for content blocking so our plan is to introduce a bit ourselves and the work that we are doing and then explain a bit these new features uh, that are happening inside Upstream Chromium. And we will be focusing on a couple of them, specifically uh, adding a Remove CSS API uh, in order to interact with uh, the injection of uh, style sheets into the extension API. And, and my colleague Sheen will be explaining into detail the whole process to have access to closed shadow root and what were changed to add a new API to access that. Uh, and we will be talking about which is the status about those functionalities and more ongoing work and what has been happening in this in this regard. So uh, in the first place about us, uh, we are Igalia. So we are an open source consultancy and our headquarters is in Galicia in Spain. We are currently 90 employees and we are all over the world distributed. And our main area of expertise is basically browsers and web engines. Uh, we have been working for many years in Chromium and F uh, WebKit and Firefox and WPE. So we we are having actually like the second uh, most active contributor after Google and Apple to Chromium and WebKit respectively. And we have also uh, teams working on the compiler side and JavaScript engines specifically and, and graphics, multimedia and accessibility. Uh, so we are also members of the W3C and we are chairs of the ARIA working group uh, and same for ECMA, JavaScript, TC39 group. So basically we we have been working on, on web engines for a long time and managed to get like a lot of owners and reviewers on both projects. And that's the reason why we are also trying to help on, on working on upstream things and some of them are very interesting for the ad blocking community. So examples of these new features that are interesting, I will cite a few of them that are these ones that I was mentioning. I will be, we will be going a bit into the detail on, on how this was implemented and the whole process of review and integrating these changes into Chromium specifically. Uh, related with remove CSS with uh, adding a new extension to open or close shadow root. Uh, and there are also other functionalities that are happening upstream as the capability of add content strip to about and data URLs. It has been merged uh, quite uh, recently uh, by some work with by Deblin that is also here. And I also want to thank uh, him for uh, also the, the work we are doing together in the community. I mean, Chromium community is uh, really a pleasure to be working on. And some of this work that we have been doing happens because the collaboration of many different uh, owners and reviewers in different parts of Chromium. And yeah, there, there are many more. I mean, uh, of course, there are things happening in dynamic content script support. There are things happening in manifest v3 uh, and, and the JavaScript world. But we are focusing on, on a couple of very specific examples that can be tracked up. So uh, with regard to the need of tabs remove CSS, this was actually coming as uh, something that was interesting uh, because a, a way to hide block dots in some scenarios is by injecting CSS rules uh, through uh, insert CSS uh, from tabs API. 
but however this is this is allowing to change uh, elements that, uh, that were happening but as, as the DOM is changing dynamically it's also necessary to be able to manipulate that in Chromium to also modify the visibility of elements that that are varying so bring back visibility to some elements to remove that and there was actually not that MP API that was covering the spec implemented in Chromium and it was already available in other in other engines so actually there was an open up screen in chromium for some time uh, to request this uh, method to be added there was also an, an initial change log added for that uh, that was started by manish uh, yatani but didn't make it to upstream got discussed discontinued so basically uh, what we were doing here was to take over that bug it was actually done by our colleague antonio gomez that was uh, bringing back uh, the issue to activity and was updating the original changelog to use the, the new APIs. Uh, it was also requiring to create a separate issue for adding an extension a modification request in the API to add that functionality. Uh, that was already adding some new method to the existing one. It's different to the, to the, to the other case that Shin will display in detail. We were adding there the, the necessary uh, tests uh, and after the iteration in the review process, it got landed. So um, uh, this uh, is slightly different to the implementation uh, that was happening in Firefox because this is adding a new security restriction that extensions can only remove the, the injected CSS that they were doing on their own. So what has to be done to actually implement uh, this new method on the API? So uh, you will have, uh, you can see the upstream. I mean, it's everything is open in the development of, of this work, but you can see that in the change log, in the change log what happens is that tabs, uh, tabs a JSON file adds the definition of a new method, a new function with a description of what it's going to do and they specify a new set of parameters what are, are actually the idea of the tab on which the CSS should be removed and a new object with the specific details of the CSS and a callback to be handled from JavaScript when this uh, removing, removal happens. Uh, so it also needs to define uh, the object with injection details that basically again has the description, the a um, selector that has to be removed and the file that is going to be used and a couple of params to identify it should be removed from all frames or just the top one. So also taking into, into account implementation, this what has to be done is also in providing coverage with some tests that are JavaScript files that in combination with some preset HTML elements it's actually verified that that's what it should do and doesn't that and, and it's not allowed to do other things that should be happening. And actually that when it's getting merged, it produces the documentation of the uh, extension API. So you can see that actually now it's already possible to both inject CSS and remove CSS with it with this new extension and the code that has been merged upstream on, on the code. So maybe I will handle on to Shin, uh, and she will be explaining uh, Shadow Root Access API. I'd like to take a deeper look at one of the examples, which is related to the Shadow Root. What is the Shadow Root? An important aspect of the web content, a web component is the encapsulation. Being able to keep the macro structure, style, and behavior hidden and separate from other codes on the page so that different parts do not crash. And the code can be kept nice and clean. The Shadow DOM API is a key part of this, providing a way to attach the hidden separated DOM to the element. You can affect the nodes in the Shadow DOM in exactly the same way as a non-Shadow nodes. And the difference is that None of the code inside the shadow DOM can affect anything outside it, allowing for handy encapsulation. You can attach the shadow root 
to any element using the element that attach shadow method. This text says uh, it's a parameter on options object that contains one option mode with a value of open or closed. Open means that you can access the shadow DOM using JavaScript written in the main page context. So element one shadow root returns the shadow root you attached. Closed means that you won't able to access the shadow DOM from the outside. So element two shadow root returns null. Why we need to access the closed shadow root, even if the spec specified that it should return always null? First, that's precisely because it would be easy for page authors to circumvent blocking as by using the closed shadow root. Second, extension APIs works on the user behalf. So on extension app should be able to modify any part of DOM. Third, it's a little bit more complicated, but there are already existing workarounds using extension APIs to access the closed shadow root. Fourth, closed mode simply prevents outside JS from drilling into the element internal DOM and it's a narrow security feature. Finally, Firefox also supports element open or close the shadow root API to allow access of the closed the shadow root. Therefore, there is a sufficient justification for the needs for this feature is necessary. Initially, this feature was implemented to have the same prototypes as a Firefox. And the API was defined as web IDA, as in other web APIs in Blink. But API should not be exposed to the general web. And it should be exposed to only isolate content script of the extension app. There is the Chromium process to launch or change the feature in Blink for new feature incubations, for implementation of existing standard, for feature duplication, and for architectural changes. The patch implemented in Blink was also required by the reviewer whether intended shipment is necessary for this case to Blink Dev Group. And there were two main concerns from Blink Dev discussion group. One was that this approach will pollute the namespace and it can cause potential issue in the future for web standardization efforts. Another was that web idea has a lack of properties for custom even if I added the new property exposed for word syntax to web idea to only expose the API for the isolated content script, web idea owner does more functions or needs for general customization. I hardly understood and agreed with these reasons, especially first reason. So, it was agreed to add the feature with the Chrome namespace. Okay, let's implement it again. Adding API to the Chrome namespace means adding API to extensions. And here is a detailed information on how to propose the new API for extensions and how to implement it. Also, the article is described it great, in great detail. I need to refer to other patches to understand some unfamiliar terms. And I want this presentation to be referenced to others as I was. 
before implementing a new API, it has to go through an approval process. This approval process helps ensure that the API is well defined, does not introduce any privacy, security, or performance concerns and fit in with the overall product vision. You can fit in the required information to the providing template and send the email with the proposal to extension-api-reviews at chromium.org for increased visibility and any additional feedback. Chrome provides detailed guidelines so it won't be able to it won't be difficult to write the template. What I did actually do for the implementation in Chrome. First, I specified the DOM namespace and open or close the shadow root method with the JSON format. And this file describes the API and the functions, events, types, and properties it contains. Extension APIs can be specified in either ideal or JSON. During compilations, all files are converted to JSON objects. The benefit to using JSON file directly is that it is more clear what the JSON object output will look like. Idea, on the other hand, is typically much more readable, especially when the API will have many methods or long descriptions. However, idea is not, a, not as fully featured as JSON in terms of offsetted properties on different nodes. So if you don't, uh, you don't have any special reason, you'd better use JSON. The actually C++ implementation added in extensions that she render a path. Keep in mind that the API exists in the path of the renderer because it needs access to the DOM object. Typically, the C++ implementation will live in extension stash browser API or Chrome dash browser dash extension API path. API features specify the requirements for API availability. If the extension doesn't satisfy the requirements, the API will not be accessible in the extension calls. The channel proposed specified a maximum channel for the feature availability. Offsetted value are a single string from trunk, canary, dev, beta, and stable. DOM namespace has a dev channel and will change it to stable channel after maturity. The context property specified which uh, JavaScript context can access the feature. All API features must specify at least one context, and only API features can specify context. Offsetted values are a list of strings from blessed extension, blessed web page, content screen, extension service worker, lock screen extension, web page, web UI. MUA on trust and on blessed extension. DOM namespace has the context value as a blessed extension and content script. The blessed extension context refers to JavaScript context learning from extension process, such as background JS, extension pop-ups, and app windows. The content script context refers to JavaScript context for the extension content script. This feature doesn't require the permission and manifest entry and behavior availabilities, but you would need them. Permission features specify the requirements for permission availability. 
if the extension doesn't satisfy the requirements, the permission will not be gained and the extension will have the install warning. Manifest features specify the requirements for manifest entry availability. If the extension doesn't satisfy the requirements, the extension will fail to load with the error. Behavior features specify the requirements for miscellaneous extension behaviors. This should typically not be used. Okay, now how can you use this feature? It's very simple. You can get the open or close the shadow root as the return value of Chrome dot dom dot open or close the shadow root method with the element parameter. Lorraine will share the release schedule and future plans. Okay, Shin. Thanks for explaining. So just to to wrap up before going to some question and answer and answers part. So which are, is the status of these couple of functionalities we have been working on? So for the case of uh, Chrome tabs, remove CSS uh, is already available in, in beta channel and should be making it for stable 87 uh, as the documentation and everything is already in place, should be, should be usable like very soon directly. And the case of Chrome DOM open or close shadow root should be available in, in dev uh, in 87. And if everything goes fine and should be should be making it in, in stable in 88. So what next? Uh, as, as these were the cases of a couple of uh, elements that were already uh, adding new uh, APIs to the extension uh, side of Chromium, we were also looking forward to move some elements that were already part of a CSS4 selector specification that could be used for element hiding. So we have been, a, we are actually working on a prototype for has pseudo selector that has been there in the specification for a while that has some uh, uh, things that have to be deeply investigated with regards to performance and the way that could be a uh, work under invalidation circumstances. But in any case, we have, uh, we are working on a functional prototype to get the work moving from the run. We are having also working on some other uh, pseudo class that were not uh, implemented in Chromium, but were available on other browsers as uh, having a, uh, uh, dear pending implementation uh, that is already uh, in states that is going to be ready to intend soon. There's also other ongoing work in this regard that was a uh, complex not pseudo selector that ac actually very recently uh, was announced that Google was moving forward and intend to ship for that functionality. And besides that and what has been the other type of uh, API missing parts to be like uh, making a smaller disk gap with other browsers or, or, and adding functionalities, there are also additional things that are happening upstream and, and that are making lives easier in a way for content blocking in order to have like uh, more, even more selectors or things that happen on the JavaScript side in coming a new JavaScript TC39 uh, uh, implementation that could make it for stage four as Realms web bundles that were also mentioned in other presentation. And and yeah, many, many other things that happens in a project as big as, as a web engine as, as in this case of that Chromium is. So this was basically all uh, from the presentation. So we will be happy to to answer any doubt or comment. Thank you both so much. There were a few questions popping through, so we'll get through probably one or two and we'll pop the rest in the Slack channel. So the one is, um, did you consult and align with existing implementations of tabs remove CSS in Firefox? And then on top of that, do you have plans to contribute to Gecko? Okay, yeah, w with regard to the status of uh, remove CSS in Firefox, we were actually uh, initially trying to provide the same functionality of the F Firefox API was providing. 
but then this this um, this issue with regards to security was raised up. So it, it seemed reasonable to add uh, this encapsulation level of security. Uh, so yeah, it's it's something that we have not done, but it's actually something that we could be eventually taking a look to make that as as uh, also available to contribute it to Gecko too. Uh, so it's, it, it it actually seems like a interesting functionality for for any of the of both of them to avoid uh, intersection between extensions doing that. Thanks. Then the next one was: Do you think platforms, browser platforms, web platforms, etc., have typically really considered the ad content filtering use case seriously when thinking of and writing their specs? And that's from Shwetank. <sighs> well, the, the the thing is that in the end, uh, content filtering is is something that is more related with more scenarios that are actually happen in many many cases when working on a web engine. I mean, it's in general, I wouldn't say that uh, content filtering is like a specific use case when uh, when writing specs in, in for web engines. But it's more like whatever any content producer can actually do, and what generic type of extension would be willing to do to to avoid that. I mean, in the end, uh, there are many scenarios in which uh, a content producer wants the website to react to some actions uh, that uh, happen when loading the element, or and an extension actually want to overwrite prototypes to do that and and but for many many different use cases that is i mean not only at blocking so at blocking would say that is in general a very specific use case of proper and secure javascript and rendering and uh, implementation of web engines in particular when doing good practices of that thanks shin was there anything you wanted to add no. Okay. Just checking. And then we've got a teeny bit of time left, so maybe I can sneak in the last question in the last two minutes. Um, from Peter Lowe, how common is the use of shadow root inserting ads? Either of you. Okay. Uh, uh, actually, I didn't see the much case uh, uh, in personal, but we really need uh, these functions because uh, edits can hide behind uh, the shadow loop. So that is uh, what I can say that. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you both. And that looks like the questions are done. So all that's left is just to thank you once again so much for your super insightful talk. Um, and people, I guess, can engage with you on Slack if they have further questions. Um, and we'll be back in a minute and a half with the next speakers. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.